we've seen regularization by using penalties on the weights. But another equally widely used regularization technique is built into stochastic gradient descent. And we'll see some use of it that's obvious and some that's rather more subtle. Starting with the more obvious one, when we train a neural net, we start with small random weights, typically generated with a Gaussian. As we take gradient steps, mini batches, the weights will get on average bigger and bigger and bigger. If we do early stopping, then we will stop before the weights get as big as they might get. We have therefore done weight shrinkage in some sense similar to L2 or L1 regularization. Pretty much everyone in deep learning does both weight penalties like L2, L1 and early stopping to make the weights smaller. But stochastic gradient descent has another less obvious property. As we saw before, people tend to use large neural nets that could and maybe should overfit they can train to almost zero training error with very small testing error. And the magic of stochastic gradient descent is that it tends to converge to relatively shallow flat minima in the loss function, which tend to generalize better. Different gradient descent methods really do converge to different solutions. Shown here is a nice set of results. On the left-hand side, training error versus mini-batch epic for a number of different methods. You can see Adam and the default up here and Adagrad below, methods we've seen before. On the right-hand curve is the testing error, evilly not going from 0 to 20, but from roughly oh, 07 up to 20. So it's not the case that the testing error is really as low as the training error. Right, training error on the low methods, the red one goes almost to zero. The testing error goes to about 7.65, right? If you do stochastic gradient descent, just vanilla. So what do we see? We see, first of all, that Adam, not tuned out of the box, is giving a training error and a testing error of about 13%. And that if you pick better hyperparameters for it, it does a better job. The purple down here, more accurate. We see that the difference between the best method, a, for example, pure stochastic gradient descent versus the worst, the raw atom, almost a factor of two, 7% testing error versus 14, 13% testing error, 12 maybe. So, how you do the convergence makes a lot of difference on what you converge to. And perhaps surprisingly, the methods that overfit the most on the training data are often doing the best on the testing data. So what's different across these methods? Can we get some intuition? I've sort of mentioned that before, but let's come back and think more carefully about it. So if you're taking a small gradient step, if you do a small step down, you're going to do a better job of converging carefully and winding your way down to find a perhaps narrow, deep local optimum. This could be good. You could be doing a good job of fitting, or it could be bad. You're doing a bad job overfitting, but it certainly has less regularization than a slow step. If you, whoops, if you take a large learning rate step, then you're going to tend to jump over some of these deep ravines, and you're going to tend to land in something that's a very shallow, broad, wide minimum in the loss function. You're going to tend to fit the data less well. In general, these broad, flat minima are more robust. They're less likely to overfit you're less likely to get yourself trapped in some local minimum. Of course, if you take too big a step, then you will end up underfitting and finding a really crappy 
local minimum, that's neither good in the training or the testing. So tuning these step signs, how big a step you take, particularly early on in the regularization process, affects where you converge and where you end up at the end. There's something else you can also adjust, which has a very similar thing effect, which is the batch size. A smaller batch size is going to give a noisier estimate of the gradient. It's going to bounce you around more. It may also therefore tend to improve generalization. So a larger batch size is going to do a better job of converging you smoothly to a local optimum, perhaps too good a local optimum, so increasing the batch size is like decreasing the learning rate, right? So if you think about having the learning rate, you go half as fast. If you have a batch size that's somewhere between twice as big or maybe four times because it's the square root of four that gives you the error, it takes you down about the same speed. So you can adjust your regularization not just by L2 penalties, but by taking larger steps or using smaller batch sizes. Give it a try.